Hey guys, it's Nate with PlayYourCourt.com. Today we're talking and about... And I'm Scott, also with <laughs> PlayYourCourt.com. I did forget about you. <sighs> My bad. What are we doing today? Today we're talking about boogieing to the bounce of the ball. I don't know what that means, but... We'll talk about it in a minute. All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about boogieing to the bounce of the ball. I can only Boogie assume... to the bounce of the ball. Come on, man. I can only assume that means Nate's going to give us some dance lessons. This video is for players with a player court rating of 80 and below. If you don't know what that means, join our community and you can figure it out. Boogie to the bounce of the ball, what, uh, what are it's you talking about? It's just a fun about? way to, to tell you to get your feet moving, but it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. All right, so... Something to note Good, here. Because I was like getting ready to just turn the video off. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, get my feet moving. Cool. See ya. Something to note, note here. <laughs> Professional players are over moving to the ball. All right. So when you're watching Fed and Adal and these guys, they're off the mark extremely fast. And there's not a lot of processing about what they're doing when they get to the ball. Part of the problem with recreational players is that they take a lot of time to get off the mark. They're thinking about the racket prep. They're thinking about the swing. They're thinking about well, they're, they're not really problem solving on the way. Guys, and before you turn this off, because I know like there's some rec league players sitting at home right now watching this saying, this is boring. Like I do this, like I know, like I guarantee you, most of you out there, you're processing and then seconds later you're moving. And that's the delay we're trying to catch up on here in this video. What we're trying to fix for you is, is that delay where your brain recognizes what to do and then there's a stall and a delay and then your body does it. Yeah, guys, um, so to put this into perspective, there was a really interesting study uh, a few years back, and it was called the Harvard study. All right, and in this Harvard study, what they were looking at was sports science and specifically the performance of track stars, you know, professional athletes on track. People with quick first steps. Quick first steps, all right, and this is what they found is that every single professional athlete that was running track had the same first step and what this was is when they were starting on their mark they were immediately initiating with getting the weight forward and the back leg from pushing off and they were taking this big big first step obviously thrusting using the big muscles and what that, that's not that's not it's not earth shattering it's not earth shattering right but this is the part that i thought was interesting they looked at the vast majority of either serious adult athletes or you know, kind of amateur athletes that were aspiring to be professional or whatever else. They're and they found a commonality it. in all of their first steps when they asked them to run the 40 or whatever it was. And it was, this is what they were doing is that as a righty loading off for my left leg to run, what they discovered is that the vast majority of these athletes took a small step back with their front foot to push forward. All right? and, and it's exactly what we're talking about. It's this inefficiency moving. Why they did it, I don't know. I know that I realized that, that I, I had the same tendency that to run, I would take a small step to load and then go, which makes a whole lot more sense just to pull your back foot up and, and take off. And it's because you're calculating, whether you realize it or not, it's unconscious, you're calculating and you're being cautious because what are you gonna over move? Are you gonna overrun to the ball? All right, so interesting enough, Scott, we were talking about you know, the, the speed and the, the rate in which a pro moves to the ball. What, what, is, what is that about? Yeah, I mean, so what's crazy is if the ball's coming at three miles per hour, they're going to move at five miles per hour to overcover and make sure they're actually there before the bounce boogie to the bounce of the ball. the bounce of the ball. So the idea is for a lot of you rec level players, you recognize where the ball is. There's a delay. Ball's at three miles per hour. You're at two, maybe three miles per hour, and you're just getting there late, and that's causing a whole handful of domino effect type errors once you arrive at the ball. Yeah, and obviously the ball is going up faster than three miles per hour. We're just using simple math as the example. But the idea here is very simple. Get to the ball, beat the ball to the bounce. So before the ball has bounced on your side, get there and then problem solve. We're gonna jump into a little demo here just so you can see exactly what we're talking about and, um, and, and really like, figure out if this is you and, and, and work on it. We'll show you a couple drills on how to work on it towards the end of the video. Let's take a look now. So guys, here you can see I'm taking these little steps and I'm being really hesitant moving up to the ball. But a lot of this is subconscious. I'm just calculating too much without really working on where I'm at. So I'm late to the ball. 
All right, and so maybe coach said, get the racket back, and I haven't traveled, all right, or I just don't trust my movement. The real issue here is these small steps only get erased because then I panic and I have to move out to the ball. So guys, what you're gonna see here is as we get closer to full speed, I'm going to get out to where the ball is, predicting the pattern, and if it changes, I'll go ahead and make these little adjustment steps. And that way I've got plenty of time. There you can see I got inside out. But I have all the time in the world to make these adjustments because I'm predicting the path early. Okay guys, so here we're gonna have a little exercise. This is something that we work with our academy kids. Scott and I, as juniors, spend a lot of time with this. Basically what Scott's gonna do is he's gonna hold two balls in each hand. Well, one ball in each hand, two balls total. And I'm gonna start behind the service line. My goal is to get to this ball before the ball bounces twice, all right? So starting behind the line, just like that Harvard study we talked during sports science, I'm really gonna try not to take this step back. I'm gonna immediately initiate forward and we'll scale it. If it's easy, probably won't be, we'll make it more difficult. If it's too hard, right, I can move closer or Scott can raise his arms. All right, let's check it out. Ready, go. Oh, way too hard. Man, so slow. When I was 16, I would have got that in the air. All right, so here we're just scaling it. The first one was a little too difficult, so inst instead of starting behind the service line, I'm gonna start with my toe just in front of the service line. And to make sure, I'll go ahead and move up to about right here or so to make sure your, your old man comedian. legs can- Get on back no? there, okay. get on back right. there. I got this one. All right, so this time still, I don't wanna know where the ball's going because I wanna be able to react and really track this foot forward, like we talked about with that Harvard study, not taking that step back. All right, so let's, ready? let's give this one a go. Ready, go. Ooh, no problem. Oh, no problem. It's you, Flash so Gordon. Fast. So fast these days. Gosh. All right, so now this is where it'll get a little bit trickier. All right, so if Scott, that's too easy, I'm kind of finding this happy medium. Maybe I go back behind the service line. Now what's gonna happen is Scott's gonna drop both balls and then as he drops them, he's gonna call a direction right or left. And I have to move to the direction, although that I see both balls being dropped. That way, if I make a false step, I work on redirecting and trying to get to the path of the ball. All right, the direction I'm gonna call is your. So if I say right, it's, it's like playing doubles. Your right. <laughs> your right, my left. Got it? It's a, I know where your right is. I'm All good. Right. It's like playing doubles with you, you just call yours. So you're saying, if I say right, you're going here? Yes. All right, you ready? On your mark, get set, left. Yes. All right, so a little funky, grabbed with the, the wrong hand there, but I was able to make the correction, although I was anticipating the other ball, all right? So really good drills here. Get on out there, practice these, and work on the foot speed. It's not just out there shagging balls. Right? You're not just running after balls on the tennis court. You've got to practice this first step. Mine could use some work. Yeah. That was a layup. It was like open ended. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Here, here, just slam this in the basket. Seriously, though, guys, I'm telling you, in, in that Harvard study that Nate points out, you do probably, I know I did, like Nate corrected this in, in my first step, and I'm to the ball, I would say about a half step faster now, yeah. as a result of just doing this drill a couple times. It's just retraining your brain to not add this extra inefficient motion. Yeah, guys, so get out there, work on the footwork, don't be too cautious, all right? If you overrun, you'll make the adjustments, all right? Very few people were always like, oh man, you were just too fast to that ball. Yeah. It happens every now and then, like, but rarely do we say that. It's always That'd be like, a great get problem. If you have that problem as a coach, we can fix that, no problem. It's, yeah. the, it's the getting there slower worried about. So boogie to the bounce of the ball, get behind the ball, especially that outside foot, all right, and then worry about the adjustment steps. Guys, hopefully, as always, this instruction helped. For sure, this is for a very specific type of player. If you're a beginner, we might be working on something a little bit more simple. If you're really advanced, we're gonna be working on something a bit more advanced. Do us a favor, we wanna give you the instruction that you need, and we wanna pair you with evenly matched players in your area so you can practice this stuff. Click the button of the link below, join the player court community. We're gonna do all those things and more for you. Also, if you liked this video, or if you just really enjoy Nate's deep Southern accent, Click the like button below, oh, click subscribe to make sure you never miss any of our videos and we'll see you guys soon. See you guys.